Good morning, Golf High. Today is Friday, August 17th, 2018. I'm Kiara Lamal. And I'm Leslie Ann Mujica, coming to you from WBUC Studios with today's school news. The word of the day today is thwart, a verb, meaning to prevent someone from accomplishing something. Could you use that in a sentence, Leslie Ann? I sure can, Kiara. He never did anything to thwart his father. For lunch Monday, we'll be having PB&J, tangerine chicken, firecracker chicken, chow mein noodles, pizza, and salad bar. And now for today's weather forecast. The high for today is 93 degrees with a low of 77 degrees with a 30% chance of rain. Enjoy the weather box. In 1969, the Woodstock Music Festival concludes. And in 1978, a balloon crossed the Atlantic. Here's some technology news, Bucks. Panasonic will survive its Tesla codependency. Apple's next-gen iPhones might actually copy a Samsung for once. Hey, Kiera, I named my horse Mayo. Mayonnaise. Cross Country would love to see you out there. Interested? See Coach Lofton in room 242 or Coach Baker in room 240. Interested in football? Walk-ons are still welcome. You must have completed an athletic packet. See Coach Grain for more information. Boys or girls golf interests you? See Coach McKay in guidance immediately for boys or Coach Armour for girls in room 234. Interested in volleyball? See Coach Emerson in room 112. Prestige portraits will be on the Golf High School campus September 4th, 5th, and October 9th and 10th to take senior portraits. Seniors can reserve a spot by signing up in room 251. There is a $15 sitting fee to be paid to the photographer the day of your scheduled appointment. You can choose to take senior portraits off campus, but you must use prestige portraits to have the photo in the Golf High yearbook. There will be a mandatory election meeting after school in the media center today at 1.50 for any freshman interested in running for student government. The first SAD club meeting will be held on Monday, August 20th in the Media Center after school. Don't forget to come out and support your Gulf High football team, band, and cheerleaders tonight at the preseason game versus Dunedin at 7.30. For more information, please refer to the scroller. That's all for our news. Have, Have a, a great, great National, National Black Hat Appreciation, Appreciation Day, Gulf High. High. <laughs> oh my god. Did you get that? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kurt Browning, Pasco County Superintendent of Schools. Thanks for watching this video. We'll be working with the Sheriff's Office to schedule drills for you to practice the active threat plan later in the school year. The changes to our crisis response plan that we are implementing this year are designed to improve safety in our schools. It's important that you take this seriously because we certainly take your safety seriously. Thanks again and have a great school year. Hi, I'm Pasco Sheriff Chris Nako. Along with all law enforcement in Pasco County, your school administrators and school board, we want to work with you to make sure that you're safe. The video you're about to watch, it's not meant to scare you, but it's meant to give you information in case of the worst case scenario that could happen in your school. We want you to have the options and the ability to know what to do in those situations, but ultimately it's going to be your choice. Please watch this video, be informed and ask questions because we're all in this together to make sure we're all going to be safe. All of our teachers and school staff members have been trained on the new plan, the ABCs of Surviving an Active Threat. The ABCs stand for Alert and Avoid, Barricade and Lockdown, and Counter. 
The goal of the plan is to provide teachers and students with the options that we can use to save lives and reduce injuries in the unlikely event of a violent threat at school. As you learn more about the plan, it is very important that you pay close attention. The next seven minutes could save your life. A stands for alert. If you see something or someone that you think is dangerous at school, you should tell your school resource officer, a teacher, or another staff member right away. Do not delay. We should always be aware of our surroundings at school and remember the phrase, see it, report it. Seeing something and reporting it is very important, but you also may become alert to a potential danger through your other senses such as hearing, touching, or smelling. For example, hearing popping noises, possible gunfire, explosions, and other things that do not sound normal. Smelling smoke, fire, or other abnormal odors. Some other examples of things you should always alert a school staff member about include guns, knives, and other weapons or dangerous objects. Always report fights or suspicious activities or people anywhere on campus. If you see violence, you should notify the first available adult when safe to do so. They will use the school intercom to make an announcement to activate the active threat plan for the entire campus. If there are no adults present, you will need to decide where it is safest to be and remain there. If a phone is available, students in this situation should call 911 to report what they are seeing in their current location to the police. It is very important to get help on the way as soon as possible. You should always stop and listen to every announcement at school. It could be something urgent and important for your safety. All alerts must be taken seriously. These announcements will continue throughout the incident to help students and staff take actions to stay as safe as possible. If you see someone with a gun or some other kind of weapon, the first goal is to get out of harm's way as quick as possible. The term avoid may mean evacuating to a safer place or locking down and barricading. This decision is based on where the violence is happening. If there is an active shooter or violent attacker on campus, you should only evacuate the building if the location of the shooter is known and there is an exit that is easy to get to and will allow you to reach safety while avoiding the attacker. You may need to evacuate from a large open area such as a hallway or a common area to a nearby classroom that can be secured from the inside because there is not time or it is not safe to evacuate further away. You may need to evacuate from a cafeteria, gymnasium, or a place where you cannot lock down to a safer room that can be locked down and barricaded. You may need to evacuate from an athletic field or an outdoor location farther away or completely off campus. For example, if there is an active shooter scene entering a building and you are outside the building, choosing to stay outside is the best choice. Listen to the school staff and follow directions. Unlike a fire drill, if you are evacuating from a violent event, you will run. If the evacuation or escape is necessary, you should try to do so by any means you can. In a life-threatening situation, any path that can get you to safety is okay. Here are some examples. Exit doors, fire doors, or emergency exits, breaking a window and escaping through the window if it is safe to do so, restricted areas normally only used by school staff, punching a hole in the sheetrock wall. Here are some important tips you should remember if you have to evacuate. Leave personal belongings behind, they slow you down. Avoid elevators and escalators. Alert and take others to safety with you, but do not stay behind because others refuse to go. Call 911 when safe to do so and tell a responsible adult where you are. You will likely meet arriving police or sheriff's deputies during an incident like this. Students and staff should display empty hands with open palms, keeping your hands up near your head and always obey the instructions of arriving police. The ultimate goal of a lockdown is to deny the attacker's access to a room or location where you have locked down. At the very least, you want to slow down, deter, and distract the attacker from direct contact with you. This is why barricading is important. Barricades do not have to be complex. A good barricade can be made in less than a minute. During a lockdown, your teacher will first lock the door and cover the windows, while everyone else in the room builds a barricade as quickly as possible against the doors using objects nearby. You should only use objects for the barricade. Never place your body against the door as a part of the barricade. Once you you have barricaded, you should not open the door for anyone. It is important to know what type of door you have in the room where you lock down. Does the door open into the room or does it open out? You should put as many heavy objects in front of the door as possible. Use desks, chairs, 
file cabinets, and other large objects that will be hard to move quickly. You should begin with the largest and heaviest objects first, and then place them directly against the door. Then add additional items on top and around the large object. To reinforce the barricade, the more, the better. For out swinging doors, you may be able to tie the door closed with a rope, a belt, or any type of material that can be used to keep the door closed. However, you should still build a barricade against the door. The obstacles serve as an additional barrier that can slow down or discourage an attacker from getting to you. The light should be turned off inside the room and all of the windows should be covered. You should try to stay out of the line of sight of windows or across from doorways. Barricading is not enough. You still need to be ready to defend yourself just in case the attacker makes it inside your classroom. Once the barricade has been created, everyone should spread out around the room. Avoid gathering together in groups and pick up something that can be used to defend themselves and possibly distract the attacker. You can use things like chairs, small furniture, a fire extinguisher, staplers, books, or anything else you can find. Your classrooms have plenty of useful objects inside. This strategy is called countering and is a last resort option of self-defense and a personal decision. We do not suggest being passive, such as lying down under a desk or hiding in the corner if an attacker makes it inside your room. It is best to take some action to defend yourself. Doing so could save your life or lives of others, but countering will never be required of anyone. If it becomes necessary to defend yourself, you should throw the objects you have picked up at the attacker. You should do so while moving around the room screaming, shouting, and making lots of noise. You may also be able to physically overpower an attacker by working in teams to swarm him. These actions may distract the attacker's plan and put him on the defensive. This may afford extra seconds for police to arrive or it may create an opportunity to run away from danger, but do not pick up or handle the weapon. Doing so could cause police to mistake you for the aggressor. You may opt to place a trash can or a large item over the weapon and guard it until the police arrive if safe to do so. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Ferguson with the School Resource Officer Unit. Now that you know more about our active threat plan, let's review the main points. A stands for alert and avoid. Always alert a responsible adult if you see anything dangerous or suspicious at school. Listen to all announcements and take all alerts seriously. Only evacuate the building if you know the location of the attacker and there is a clear path to your exit. Do not leave a safe place for the unknown. Evacuation means getting from an area of immediate danger to any safer place. B stands for barricade and lockdown. The goal of a lockdown is to deny or delay the attacker from getting inside your room. Lock the door and cover the windows. Build a barricade as quickly as you can. For outswinging doors, you may also be able to tie the door closed with a belt or piece of rope. Be sure to spread out around the room and pick up items you can use to defend yourself. C stands for counter. Countering is a last resort option of self-defense and it's a personal decision. Throw the objects you have picked up at the attacker do so while moving around the room, screaming, shouting, and making lots of noise. You may physically be able to overcome an aggressor by working in teams to swarm him. Do not pick up or handle a weapon, and always look for opportunities to run away from danger.